Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about Parser, the project 6 of CS50 AI. So pretty much in this exercise we're going to write an AI to parse sentence and extract noun phrases. This course is really good, so if you're interested in taking this, ex this course with the help of an instructor, you can check the description below and join our waitlist for our next bootcamp focusing on AI. But while you're waiting, we can solve here this exercise. Pretty much we're going to ask the user for a sentence and our goal is to generate this part in here where we get the sentence and we split into noun phrase, verbal phrase, and we get the noun which is homes and the verb which is set. Okay, and then we're gonna display that pretty much. In here we're gonna implement three parts, two functions, and we're gonna do the part of noun terminals we're gonna see in a moment. And this is pretty much what we have by now in our code. So we are receiving all the terminals, so adjective, adverb, conjunctions, and nouns, paragraph, uh, phrases, verbs. So here we have the set of words we're gonna use. This part we're gonna implement in the future. They are always they are already using grammar and parser variables here to use a library that will help us out. And in the main function, we are just calling, we're just starting the program. So in this if statement, we are checking if we the user is sending us the parts that we need. So here we just need to send the name of the file, so that's fine. And if we didn't send, okay, we're gonna ask the user for a sentence. So I'm gonna use the same example they put right there. So let me copy, good. Let me scroll down to here and I'm gonna put here right away the input. Then the next step, we should convert the input into a list of words. So right now we have a string and if I go inside of this function, we have our string sentence with the exactly the input of the user. So in this function, we're gonna convert sentence to a list of its words, pre-process sentence by converting all characters to lower case and removing any word that does not contain at least one alphabetic character. So pretty much here we need to kind of clean the data. So we should create a list only with words and we should put all of them into lowercase because in the future in order to compare we need to compare the words in the same case. In programming usually our compiler doesn't understand that capital A and lower A are the same letter so that's why we should convert in the same case. So let's just start right away. Doing this conversion I'm gonna use the same variable sentence and I'm gonna say sentence.lower so the lower function converts everything to lowercase and then I'm gonna split this sentence by the space so every time we see a space in here this will represent a new word so I'm gonna have here words equals to sentence dot sentence dot split and if I do split like this way it will split every time we have a white space okay so let me run all over again and we can check the things that we have so let me save I'm gonna restart here the debugger and we are gonna see exactly what I just told you so let me put here where it is let me put here the sentence we have our variable sentence it is loading all in lowercase and the split function already split those two words into two items in our list. Now our goal is to clear the words to remove any punctuation. So in this case, for example, the word set, we have a period, so we should extract that. So I'm gonna create a result list. Oh. And I'm gonna do a loop in all the words. So for word in words, I am going to remove the punctuation from the word. So I'm gonna say here, cleaned word is equals to. We use this notation dot join and this will do the job for us. We're gonna do a loop in every char and we're just gonna append if the char is alpha. So this is another way of writing, but pretty much we are doing a loop in every character. We are combining those characters and we're only adding the ones that are letters. If there are punctuation, we won't add in this cleaned word. And then if we still have a word, if it's not only a punctuation, so we need to check if clean clean it word exists. If it does, if it's an actual, actual word with no punctuation, we're going to append in our list and we are pretty much good to go. So at the end, I just need to return result. So let me go ahead and use the debugger here one more time. Let me remove this line because we don't need it anymore and we will see exactly the steps we just discussed. So I am going to put here the sentence. We have it in lowercase. We split it into a new list, but we still have punctuation. The first word we're going to work is homes. So after this line, we're going to be adding. Let me skip to the next row. Take a look. We are adding all the chars in here kind of adding, checking if it's a char. And by the end of it, we're gonna have a brand new word only with letters. Since 
we have a string we're going to append in our results list as we can see in here. Next iteration, we're going to work with the word set. And once I click in here, the cleaned word has the word set without the period anymore. So then, because it's a string, we're going to append in the results list. We already checked all the words we have in the sentence and we're going to return to the main function. All right, so we did the first part. Let's move forward and do the next implementation. So the known terminals global variable should be replaced with a set of context-free grammar rules that, when combined with the rules and terminals, allow the parsing of all sentence in the sentence directory. So pretty much we are going to create here some rules using those notations of sentence, noun, phrase, verb, and then once we do that, we're going to be able to work with those text words we have in here. So we will be able to do the job they are asking us. Just to simplify a little bit our life, I put here some, some ideas to generate these rules that we need to follow. So S will be the abbreviation for sentence, N for noun, NP for noun phrase, V it's verb, VP it's verb phrase, DT is the ter determiner, ADJ adjective, sconge for conjunctions, and P for prepositions. So one of the rules we need to think about is this one. Let me see, I, I think I cannot expand. So this is one of the examples that we can think about. If you take a look here, we have the word D in here, and we have the word home right here. So I'm getting one of the examples that they are providing. In the phrase D home, this is a noun phrase, right? Where D is the determiner and N is the noun. So we can create a rule that noun phrases can be generated by determiners and nouns. The other example, the red door, we have a noun phrase as well, where D is the determiner, red is the adjective, and door is the noun. So let me start writing this part just to simplify a little bit our lives. Actually, I'm going to do this later. So here we have another rule. We can have a noun phrase only with the with a noun, like say homes. So this is another rule we can generate. We can have a verb phrase just saying smiled, where we only need a verb. Or we can have another verb phrase saying told the story, where told is the verb. This story is a noun phrase, where D is the determiner and noun is the story. So we can generate this rule. Another rule I thought about is a prepositional phrase phrase where in the room, in is the preposition, the room is our noun phrase where the determiner and now is our room. We ha I have other two scenarios. So for example, told the story in the room. This is a verb phrase where told is the verb. The story is a noun phrase and in the room is a prepositional phrase. So those are the things you should think to generate this type of rule for verb phrase. And finally, we have smile and chucked. So here we have a verb phrase where the first verb phrase is just the word smile. We have a conjunction, the word and, and another phrase, another verb phrase with this last verb. So we have this other rule. So I brought here some of